Hey everyone, and welcome back. I'm going to get into our video in a minute, I promise, but first I'm just taking this opportunity to show off one of my favourite babies from this year, which is a Firefly Yellow Belly Acid female. And she is absolutely amazing. Awesome colour and pattern. I don't know how well the camera is focusing, but yeah, this is a morph I wanted to make for about five years. So she's just a good example of why patience is key. Especially in this hobby. Uh, especially if you think you're going to make any money. <laughs> um, anyway, today I'm going to talk about how to incubate ball python eggs without killing them. Um, so first off, I want to say that compared to some species, ball python eggs aren't actually too sensitive. They're, they're quite hardy. They can tolerate the occasional small mistake. They're not like, say, green tree python eggs, which need a very stable, you know, tropical, um, sorry, equatorial kind of temperature range. Um, and they're, they're probably not as sensitive as the, the eggs of pythons, which can thermoregulate to a certain extent to, to help um, maternally incubate their eggs. So they can, they can tolerate small mistakes, so it's not as critical as for some species, but you do all the same need to get right what I would call the recipe, which is temperature, humidity, and stability. Those are the key elements to get right. If you do get these right, you will hatch out lots of baby ball pythons quite easily. So, first of all, um, when it comes to temperature, I do aim for a temperature of I don't know why, but I always incubate at 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, a lot of people incubate between 88 to 90 Fahrenheit. And really that seems to be the sweet spot for hatching out um, healthy babies with minimal deformities. Um, and it's when you stray outside of this range that you start to, to get problems. Um, you can incubate as low as 85, for example, it'll just take longer. Um, but if you, if you incubate much lower than 85, there's a higher chance of defects. Well, not defects, but issues during incubation occurring simply because it takes longer and there's more time for problems to arise. Whereas on the other side of the coin, if you incubate at more than, say, I'm going to say 91 Fahrenheit. I honestly think there's a much higher percentage of um, birth defects and malformations that occur in babies that just don't do well. It's like they've been rushed, they hatch out, and they don't, they don't eat well, they don't do well. At least that's what I've found and what a few other people have told me. Some people say incubate them at whatever temperature, 92, etc., and they do fine, but I, I just haven't found that myself. So temperature, aim for that sweet spot. If you want them to take a little bit longer, aim for 88. Or if you want to just do them like I do and aim for a sort of 58 day time span or 60 day time span, aim for um, 89 degrees or 89 and a half around there. Sorry, buddy. Uh, now, when it comes to humidity, this is, Humidity is quite a sensitive one because <laughs> the the main cause of uh, embryo death in eggs in the wild in wild bull pythons is desiccation or drying out. So what happens basically if they don't have enough humidity, um, either through the air or through their substrate, is that the yolks actually harden. It doesn't kill the baby directly, but it hardens the yolk. The developing baby can't absorb the yolk to feed on and grow and it ends up essentially starving and dying in the egg. So you need to get your humidity some literally somewhere between 90 and 100 percent in the uh, in the incubation chamber I guess you could call it in whatever tub you put them in um, and that is the, the key to keeping them hydrated and keeping of course the substrate hydrated. Um, you will find that the, the eggs will collapse and wrinkle a lot early on if your humidity is way off. Uh, so if they're doing that within a couple of weeks, that's your sign to, to get that humidity up a bit. Usually the best way is just to add a tablespoon of water to the substrate and see what happens. Um, likewise, you don't want eggs to be wet 
you just want them to have nice humidity you don't want them to be standing in water ever as well so humidity is it's quite a sensitive one with this with this type of thing uh, and the third ingredient in what i call the recipe is stability and so i've got allergies over the top at the moment um, and when i say stability i mean stability in two senses i mean literal stability like eggs not rolling around <laughs> not turning eggs over when you handle them keeping them orientated the same way not dropping the box of eggs or anything like that not being somewhere where there's loads of vibrations all the time you know, i don't even hoover next to my incubator because i'm maybe a little bit paranoid about it but i, I think that type of um, static sort of stability is 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 important um, and stability the other sense is i mean stability of the first two ingredients which is humidity and temperature particularly temperature temperature fluctuations can severely harm the embryo and and possibly kill them depending on how big the fluctuation is so when you've got an incubator and you're happy with it you need to set up your incubator and have it running for i'm going to say at least 48 hours before you even think about putting eggs in it preferably a week if you can and you need to watch it round the clock if your temperature is fluctuating by more than a couple of degrees over the course of a 24-hour period that will increase the chances of you having problems incubating your eggs that's not what you need so you need the most stable incubator in terms of temperature possible and you need an egg box which closes airtight i'm going to go over that in a bit and that will help you keep the humidity stable so those two elements being stable is is the other way I'm, I'm talking about stability and that's extremely important um, so obviously I've mentioned incubators here and you do need to choose an incubator there's there's lots of models available there's lots of professional models available I'm not talking about the tiny ones which are only suitable for leopard gecko eggs I mean I wouldn't even bother with those um, but there are larger commercial um, options available. I want to say Scott Wilbanks or Mike Wilbanks, I can never remember, brought out one, but I'm not sure. Anyway, one big breeder has definitely made their own incubator that they're retailing now. Um, but the other option, of course, is to make your own incubator, and you can, you can do this easily. I've written an article on, on how I made a DIY incubator. All I wanted to say was that obviously coolers, wine coolers and fridges are the main choices when you make your own incubator. It's easy to do, just follow the, uh, the article, I'll link it below. But the problem is that recently they have begun adding gas blown insulation, um, which is foam blown into the cavities of wine coolers and fridges using um, extremely toxic foams like PVC and not PVC I can't remember what the name of it anyway um, but extremely toxic gases like cyclopentane and if you pierce the cavity of your incubator if it's made from a, a wine cooler or fridge with these materials the toxic substances will slowly leach out during incubation and you'll think it's going great for a month and then a month five weeks in perhaps all your eggs will die and you won't know why so really be careful about the model and make you use look for labels that say gas blown insulation used etc it should be marked by the manufacturer so this is this is really something an, an ongoing problem it's something to think about uh, and i have known at least two people that have had um, several clutches die in this way so far so this is really something to to keep an eye on um, now the second thing you need to choose when you've chosen your incubator, now I've scared you all about it, uh, is to choose your incubation medium. So the two best options in my opinion are perlite and vermiculite. Vermiculite is cheap, slightly, slightly more likely to go mouldy, but not too much anyway. It holds water well, you mix it in a 50-50 vermiculite to water weight ratio. Perlite is a is a different material. It's it's more like a volcanic glass or something along those lines. But again, you mix it 50-50 perlite to water ratio in weight. And either of these tend to work well. Personally, I choose Hatchrite, which is pre-mixed perlite. 
because uh, I don't have a lot of clutches and it's just it's more expensive but it's easier I know it's pre-mixed I know it's got the right water content I know I don't have to mess with it or weigh it and I, I'm just lazy so that's what I do but it works <laughs> um, so when you've got that you need to get an egg box I use plastic tubs with latching lids what we call really useful boxes over here in the UK you might not have those in the in the US but you'll have something similar and I generally like to use something that I know is food safe so you know it's not got any toxic plastics in it and then I put the perlite in the hatch right scoop out a little depression sit the eggs in it seal the top with press and seal which you can get in Europe by the way everyone um, if you go on Amazon seal the top with press and seal and then latch it I make sure the top is I've rubbed the edge of the tub so that the press and seal I know is firmly stuck all over and then I put the lid on and that is it I leave them for a couple of weeks and then I replace the press and seal to, um, to get some air in and make sure there's no drips on the eggs and then I go through the whole incubation period like that checking every couple of weeks and then when the babies start to pip I just lift up a corner of a press and seal and let them have some air so they've got air at all times um, and it that really is how how simple it can be when you know that your water and perlite ratios are, are good I don't ever make it more complicated than that a lot of people do substrate this incubation now and that is something for you to research through people that know what they're doing with it because I don't know what I'm doing with it I don't use substrate lists I never have I for some of the really old primordial processes like incubation I do rely on the most natural kind of setup possible so I like the eggs to be in contact with a substrate with its own humidity uh, which decreases their you know their surface area to volume ratio when you count the areas that are actually exposed exposed to air and stops too much moisture evaporating through them that's logical to me and that's how I do it but other breeders have other ways so don't just limit yourself to my opinions on this so another thing a lot of other people do too is actually separate the eggs pull them apart one by one before incubating them and again that's never that's something I never ever do they're stuck together for a reason it helps keep them stable and it reduces like I said their exposed surface area to volume ratio which helps lower the amount of water that they can lose through their shells um, so again that's not something I do if you want to do that you can research the reasons why you might want to but it's not for me and it never will be um, so once you're all set up and you're good to go you start the countdown <laughs> and this will be the most frustrating uh, two months of your life probably if it's the first time you breed and it will seem like it lasts forever but generally anywhere between 55 and 65 days after they're laid they will start to hatch somewhere after around five to six weeks they will start collapsing as well they start just denting in basically because the snake is using up the available moisture and yolk inside and that is also per perfectly normal as long as they don't start collapsing too early say in the first few weeks which again is a sign of low humidity and what you might get occasionally also is every once in a while an egg will die or an egg will go moldy I don't bother trying to separate that either you know moldy eggs don't kill healthy eggs and a lot of the old breeders will tell you that because they've you know they've been there they've seen it so that is basically the whole process I know this has been a long video and but it is a very important thing to get right and it's an important thing to research really well before you start and it's really important to get that incubator perfect before you have eggs anywhere near ready um, so just at the end of this video I just wanted to take your attention away to another phenomena which is maternal incubation where you simply leave the eggs with the snake and again I'll do a video on that in the future um, it's not something that I would do very often but it does work and there are ways of doing it so in the future I'll, I'll make a video and I'll I'll put it up and notify everyone but anyway as always I hope this has been really helpful um, I've got plenty of things on morph market if you want to take a look I've got too many actually but please do like and subscribe and let me know what what else you'd like to know what would you like my next video to be for example thank you very much <laughs>